I throw out the topics and then he gives you a scale of where they fall on the freak out factor. Freak out factor. What's your freak out factor? One of our favorite games. Freak out factor. Freak out factor. Freak out factor. You have to be very careful in how you say freak out factor. Freak out factor. Freak out factor scale. Freak out or no? What's your freak out factor? Freak out factor. Freak out factor. Season debut of Freak Out Factor, one of our favorite segments here on MLB Central. Anthony DeCastrovins of MLB.com. You know how this works. I throw out the topic and he tells you how freaked out he is on a scale of 1 to 10, although sometimes that can be fudgeable too. Right, Anthony? <laughs> sure. Of course, of course. I'm still freaking out about that last segment, Rope Blow. I think, I think we was, all uh, are. I think there's going to be some counseling scale. that is going to be, need to be uh, <laughs> had really by the entire studio department and production yeah. team. Uh, Al Leiter. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's yeah, start with the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, Anthony. Uh, you did not have them in your top 10 rotations uh, going into the season. Yeah. Where are you now on that? It, does that lead you to, to freak <laughs> out on not judging accurately the Tampa Bay Rays? <laughs> Absolutely freaking out. Uh, I'm hearing the I'm getting the business uh, from the Rays fans and the Rays themselves uh, for not having them in my top 10. It was actually my top 11 rope flow because I had a tie at number 10. So I'm going to put this at 11 out of 10 on the freak out factor scale for snubbing and dissing that ra Rays rotation. Sometimes you're the windshield. Sometimes you're the bug. I am the ladder in this instance. Uh, the Rays, you know, they've been dominant in every aspect of the game in the early going. Plus 58 run differential through 10 games. Wow. Seventh team in MLB history to start the season 10 and 0. But the backbone, of course, is a dominant starting rotation. 1.83 ERA, 197 average against. They've just been fantastic. And there was a lot of optimism about this group going into spring training. You know, they, they finally had a legit starting five instead of the usual, you know, kind of hodgepodge of fill-ins fill -ins and openers and whatnot. Um, they did use an opener last night because they are, you know, operating currently without Tyler Glass now, which is pretty scary to think about what this group could do with him. Um, but his injury was reason, one reason I didn't have him in the top 10 because, you know, this is a team that's ranked near the bottom or at the bottom in MLB in starters innings each of the last five seasons. And, right. Um, um, you know, while I did share the optimism about the raw stuff of this group, you know, you, you Glass now has only pitched 100 innings one time in his career. Uh, Jeffrey Springs last year was three times as many innings he's ever thrown in, in his career. Um, you know, Shane McClanahan, who uh, we, we saw that excellent segment, uh, assault aside, it was an excellent segment about <laughs> Shane McClanahan. He did have the shoulder injury late last year. So I just wondered about the, you know, the, the durability, I guess, uh, and, and, and the management over the course of the year. And we will, we'll see, but, but so far that group has been fantastic. So I'll, I'll wear the egg on my face for now. Yeah, Shane McClanahan gets to start for the Tampa Bay Rays, and Garrett Whitlock will make his season debut for the Boston Red Sox tonight. That's in St. Petersburg. All right, freak out factor, Anthony. The Cardinals are three and seven. They're three and seven. That's a five out of ten because they're in fifth place, surprisingly, in the NL Central. A lot of people expect them to dominate that division. The Brewers have been started out hot. Uh, the Cardinals have come in cold here. I'm not terribly worried about this lineup. I, I think we've seen that, you know, they, they can generate traffic uh, with the best of them. They've been uh, among the best teams in baseball at batting average and on base percentage. Just haven't cashed on those opportunities. They stranded 30 runners against Milwaukee over the weekend. That's not a fun weekend, but we've seen what Jordan Walker can do in, in his brief big league career, 10 game hitting streak. Um, they just have depth and balance. I, I like that lineup, but I'm more concerned about is the concern we had going into the season. They're starting rotation. Yeah, they've got one quality start in 10 games. By my math, that's 10 percent. That's not going to get it done. Um, you know, Jack Flaherty is, is kind of the bellwether, I think, for that group and maybe for this team in general. Um, he's been good at preventing runs, but he's walked a lot of batters. And, and, and that's the, that's what it comes down to when you look at their, their starting numbers. They need to keep people off the base pass. So uh, mildly freaked out about the Cardinals in the early going. What about the Mariners? They're four and seven. Yeah, and that's interesting. Uh, I'll put that at a four because they've actually had four one run losses. We're not accustomed to that from this Mariners team over the last two years. They have the best one run record in baseball, uh, 67 and 41 over the last two seasons in one run games. So it's strange to see them one and four. And uh, there's still a lot to like about this pitching staff, but they're currently without Robbie Ray in the rotation. They're without Andres Munoz in the bullpen, which is a big factor, uh, you know, as long as he's out. Um, they had a chance to sweep here in Cleveland over the weekend. The ball goes off to Oscar Hernandez's glove. Uh, you know, he struggled a bit defensively. They lost three late leads in that game. Then they lose in Wrigley. Uh, but I will say a big, big positive for, for Seattle is Jared Kelnick. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, he had a home run last night, game-tying home run. He's 
he's he's showing that swagger I think a little bit that we expected from him when he was a top prospect so if, if he can you know if he can stay hot I, I think the rest of the team will connect and, and that could be big for them. Anthony I hate this one here Adam Duvall fractured his wrist on Sunday yeah. playing center field trying to catch a uh, a, a fly ball out there in Detroit freak out factor he's got a fractured wrist I thought he was on his way to a big season and and still um, that might be the case but it's interrupted right for right now. Yeah, it's interrupted for six to eight weeks is what we're hearing. So I'll put this freak out at six to eight or call it seven if you want, whatever, somewhere in that range, because uh, that's his importance to this Red Sox group that, you know, it, it looks a lot different in the lineup and mm. they need some pleasant surprises. And Adam Duvall was one. This was not a, you know, a, a signing that attracted a, a lot of, you know, enthusiasm or parades in the streets of Boston. but. Um, this guy was fantastic in his first eight games. He had nine extra base hits and 14 RBI. You don't expect him to continue that rate, of course, but um, he's been a productive player in the past. Last year, he did deal with wrist injuries as well, and it sapped his power a little bit, but at the beginning of this year, he was healthy and, and productive, so that's a big loss for the lineup because yeah. they just don't have great backup options in center field. Part of that is an offshoot of the Trevor Story injury mm. uh, because then you had Kike Hernandez at shortstop because of Trevor Story's absence. Well, now, you know, they, they'll probably need to use Kike a little bit in center field. Rymel Tapia, uh, uh, Ruff Schneider. I mean, these these are their, their backup options. So, again, I mean, it's a team that needs pleasant surprises, I think, to contend in the deep AL East, and this was yeah. an unpleasant surprise. Well, we hope that he is back and uh, better and healthy and ready to go in no short order. All right, let's, let's stay with this Red Sox thing. Freak out factor, Anthony. Fenway Park has sugar-free ketchup. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a straight 10 out of 10, right? I mean, uh, WBZ News Radio, uh, apparently this has been a, a thing for several years now, but WBZ News Radio in Boston was the first to uh, catch up to this story. And uh, apparently mm. it has uh, no artificial sweetener. So there, there is some sugar in there, but it's all natural. And what good is that? I'm, I'm generally, you know, I'm, I'm a supporter of condiments not being all confection. That's fine. Yeah. But not at the ballpark. The ballpark is supposed to be our, our respite, our, uh, you know, our yeah. getaway. More chemicals, from... the better, I say. Exactly. We just need to pump as much artificial junk into our bodies <laughs> at the ballpark right. as possible. That is part of the experience. So I'm, I'm freaking out about that. And apparently some Red Sox fans are as well. They're even going to the great length of bringing their own ketchup packets into the ballpark, Roblo. Hey, we would not be red-blooded Americans if we were not full of <laughs> additives and preservatives and all that in our food and drink. So Anthony Castro Vince with the Freak Out Factor. You can read his work on MLB.com. Great stuff as always, Anthony. Good to catch up with you. Likewise. Thank you, sir.